Hi everyone, in this lesson we want to talk about how we can solve equations and inequalities by graphing. Now we already uh, know how to solve these algebraically and so I'm going to start with an example here where we'll solve these uh, both algebraically and then graphically to see how they're related. Okay, So here's a simple linear equation. I want to get my x on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and subtract x from both sides. I think in my mind of bringing this x over on this side, subtracting it, that'll give me 2x. I bring the negative 3 over onto the other side. I uh, add 3 to both sides, so that would give me a <clears throat> negative 4. And then I divide both sides by 2 to get my answer. In this case, x equals negative 2. Okay, so hopefully that's pretty straightforward. So x is equal to uh, negative 2 there. All right, I want to look at that same thing <clears throat> uh, graphically. So let's. What I want to do is I want to look at at uh, the two sides of this equation. I'm going to graph this this uh, uh, left hand side. I'll let that be y equals x minus seven. So if I look at y equals x minus seven, I know that that has a y-intercept of negative uh, seven. So that will give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and a slope of 1. So that would be a rise of 1 and a run of 1, or a rise of negative 1 and a run of positive 1. And then I can just connect the dots, and then I'll have my graph. So that should look something like this. Okay, now let's also look at <clears throat> the right hand side. I'm going to graph that in red. So I've got also y equals 3x minus 3. That has a y intercept of negative 3. That'd be right here. And a slope of 3. So I'll think of that slope of 3 as a rise of 3 and a run of 1. Or I could go a rise of negative 3 and a run of negative 1. Or a rise of negative 3, run of negative 1. Okay, and if I connect those dots with a nice red line, that will look like this. Okay, and I think I'll also <clears throat> extend this just a little bit, my blue line. There we go. <clears throat> All right, and notice <clears throat> that where the the red line, the 3x minus 3 equals the blue line, the x minus 7, is right here. They intersect right here, and notice that that point of intersection is at negative 2. All right, so you can see that, that at x equals negative 2, if I were to plug negative 2 into the, the left-hand side, the blue equation, I'm going to get this value down here. What is that? Uh, negative 9, I think it is. Okay, and notice if I plug negative 2 into this equation, the red one, right, it's also going to be negative 9. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 minus 3 is negative 9. So they, that's the one point where they intersect. You can see there's only one point of intersection. There's only one solution to that equation. Well, I can also think of the, the inequalities in terms of this graph. If, if I were to solve this algebraically, right, x minus 7, I do the same thing, same procedures I did up here. I'd bring the x over on this side, right, 2x. Uh, and over on the right, I add 3 to both sides, I get negative 4. I divide both sides by 2, I'd get x is greater than negative 2. And I'd probably want to turn that around in English. x is greater than negative 2. Okay, so, so this is my answer to, uh, to this inequality right here. And notice that, that graphically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm asking where is this blue line less than, smaller than, below the red line. Okay, and you want to know in terms of x, right? Because that's what I'm looking for is x. So if I come over here, let's look at my x's up here. And if I go like, say, over here at x equals negative 4, and I come down here, is the blue line below the red line, or is the red line below the blue line? Right, again, over here at negative 3. Is the blue line below the red line? No, the blue line's above the red line, isn't it? But if I get over here to the right of negative 2, like at negative 1, you'll notice that the blue line, right, because these lines cross, now the blue line is below the red line, right? So, so if I want to know where is 
where is the blue line, the x minus 7, below the red line, the 3x minus 3? You can see it's for, it's this part of the graph, right? And that corresponds to these values up here. Any of these x values over here make the blue line smaller than the red line. Now, if I come down to this equation, let me do this one in uh, red, I guess. I'll do it in green. Um, I'll uh, I do the exact same steps. Right? The only thing that's different is that now this is greater than instead of less than. So I'd subtract x from both sides. Uh, I'd bring the negative 3 over here on this side. I divide by 2. And so I get that my x value is less than negative 2 for this inequality. Well again I'm asking where is the blue line? In this case greater than. Where is it on top of? Above the red line. And you can see over here it's going to be these x's that are smaller than negative 2. If I choose any of these values over on this side, okay, if I choose like x equals negative 3, you can see the blue line is going to be above the red line. That's going to be true for any of these x's over there. Okay, so so again my answer to this is the x is less than negative 2. Alright, now in this example we used what's called the the intersection method to solve. However, sometimes that intersection isn't always as clear uh, and this one's sort of at the bottom of my graph, and even that one was a little bit difficult. Uh, and so there's another um, technique that we can also solve. Here's a, an example that illustrates the, the problem and even uh, uh, exemplifies it even more. So suppose I wanted to solve 3 minus 8x equals 5 minus 7x graphically. Well, these are really steep lines. y equals 3 minus 8x. The slope is negative 8. And 5 minus 7, that's really steep also. When you graph it, it's, it's really hard to tell what the point of intersection is. And if you, if you play around here, you can uh, find a window. And even then, it's still, they're so close together right there. Um, but if you, if you search, you can find it looks like, you know, at negative 2 right here is where they intersect. And, and uh and that actually ends up being it but you can see where where this might be much more difficult to find that point of intersection using the method we did before and so the point of that is to illustrate that there is another way of finding the solution that's that's much easier we call that the zero method and the zero method means you just do a little bit of algebra to start with to get zero on one side of the equation and then you just graph the other side of the equation alright so for example in in this case if I were to take everything over on the right hand side <coughs> I would have let's get my 3 minus 8x equals 5 minus 7x if I were to go ahead and add 7x to both sides I would get negative x on this side um, oops, I wanted to take everything on one side. I wanted 0 on the other side, so I also have to bring the 5 over on this side, so that would be minus 2. Alright, and so then I would go ahead and just graph uh, this side right here. I get, you know, I'll let that be my y. I can do that in green if I want. So I'll have uh, uh, my y intercepts negative 2. My slope is negative 1. That's a rise of negative 1 run of 1 or rise of positive 1 run of negative 1. Okay. And when I graph that, I will have a line. Let me do it in green. Okay. And notice that the other side, right here, if I think of that as another y, y equals 0. So I had, if I graph like y equals negative x minus 2, then I also graph y equals 0. Well, y equals 0, that's just a slope of 0 and a y-intercept 0. That's, that's just the x-axis, isn't it? So if I were to graph that, I really wouldn't have to graph it. I'll do it just for this example. Okay. But basically, when you do the zero method, all you have to do is look and see where where is it going to cross the x-axis. 
and you can see that the point of intersection, sure enough, is x equals uh, negative 2, which is much easier than, than trying to find the right window, even if you have a graphing calculator, and, uh, and maybe have a difficulty even finding the intersection then, okay? So that's the zero method. So our solution here is just x equals negative 2.